I welcome to the channel. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, be sure to check them out. Also, whilst I remember, please hit that subscribe and like if you find this uh, at all useful or informative. We're loaded up here with the Iris Simulations Grob Tutor T1 or the 115 Echo. Uh, and we are at Echo Golf X-Ray Tango, which is RAF Wittering. This video is going to be a very quick cold and dark start with a taxi takeoff land and maybe shutdown checks at the end. We'll see how the time goes. We are loaded up into the cockpit, so the first thing you'll want to do is to look over the side of the rail, i.e. once you've stood on the wing, and you can make sure that your ignition switch is off, the mixture is to cut off, and your flaps are selected to match uh, what you can see outside. That way, if you apply electrical power, the flaps aren't going to travel and potentially trap someone's fingers in them. Once we get into the cockpit, we can strap in uh, and we can set the parking brake. This one's already set. Uh, and we can run through the rest of the FRCs. I am referencing the real FRCs. Uh, I have got previous experience in this aircraft type, so it's a little bit familiar to me, but it might take me a little while just to get back into the groove of things. So let's start switching some things on. Uh, you can, before we start, just make sure everything is uh, in decent condition, which it's a flight sim, it's going to be. So battery switch, generator switch, no fuel pump, no ignition, avionics. With the avionics on, you can switch the COM1 and COM2 on. Here's the transponder. Here is a uh, navigation two box, and here is a navigation one box with your uh, audio selectors up here. This is your caution warning panel at the top, very few captions available, and you've got a GPS on the left-hand side. That's pretty much all the digital stuff you'll need to be familiar with. We can also reset the G-meter whilst we're at it. We'll select the nav lights to on. That tells everyone else we're in the cockpit. And with a crew chief outside, we could select the PETA switch on, get him to check it, make sure it warms, and switch it off. He'll also do a store warner check uh, by tapping the tab, which I think is normally on the left-hand wing, so you can hear it in your uh, audio headset. Uh, moving on, you can check that uh, everything else is in good condition. Uh, into the middle, we've already reset the G-meter. Alternate air is cold. The flaps are up. Uh, the throttle, we can exercise and set to max. The RPM, we can exercise and set to max and the mixture we can exercise and set to cutoff. I just scroll down in my FRCs here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, fuel selector on the center, we're going to make sure that is in the open position and we've selected the left tank. The takeoff trim is in the green. Next we can check the full and free on the controls and we are ready to start this airplane. Okay, now that we're ready to start the engine, we're going to select the strobe lights to red. We're going to select the ignition, make sure that is off. The fuel pump goes to on. The throttle you can see is still at uh, full power here. We're going to select the mixture to rich for about three seconds. One, you'll see the fuel flow increase. That's three seconds, then back to off. We'll then select the throttle to idle and then crack it open about one centimeter. We'll select the fuel pump to off and the ignition to left. Now we're ready to tell the crew chief uh, that we're good to start. And we're going to press the starter button, which is here. Once the engine starts and kicks into life, we'll select the mixture to rich and it should then accelerate smoothly. So here we go. And there we go, the engine has started, the captions are all clear. Uh, and then we can check the ignition to both. CWP captions are out, the throttle are set 1000 to 1200 RPM. And check the oil pressure is reading above 25, which we are. Good engine start. Okay, so after start, we'll check the ammeter. That's the um, thing that reads the output of the generator. It's reading positive. GPS will switch to on. We can switch everything else to on. One, two, uh, we'll select that to standby. That's on, that's on. We could set some frequencies up, but I'm not going to at this stage. So we are good to go in terms of the avionics. We can check the ignition to left and right to make sure the engine doesn't cut out, both magnetos are working fine. The flap we can set all the way to full and all the way back up. Interestingly we taxi this aircraft with the flap up and only select it once we're ready for takeoff. Mixture lever we can set to about two thirds. That'll do there. And the fuel selector we're going to take to the right tank. 
just to prove that it feeds fine from both sides. The altimeters we can set and the harness should be tight. Now we're good to taxi. Taxi will switch the landing light on, release the parking brake, and off we go. Now it's worth noting this aircraft doesn't have nose wheel steering, so it's just a Microsoft Flight Sim thing. Normally it's differential braking that'll steer you. Now the wind sock is pointing down the runway, so that's cool. What we need to do is point into wind and do our engine checks. Lock and brake is applied. Okay, so with these practice you can get these done really quickly. I'm going to refer to the FRC, so they'll take me a little longer. The park brake is set, the throttle is going to go to 1200, I'm going to shut the canopy. I'm going to look from the outside because a slight bug with Microsoft quite sim is that the animations all operate twice, one from internal and one from external. That's complete, the canopy is closed and locked, the flying controls are sent for the fuel selector, go back to both. Oil pressure should be in the green sector up here. And the throttle we can set to 1500 RPM. So we're looking at this gauge. That's 1500. The oil temperature should be a minimum of 40 degrees C, which it is. Now we can now set the throttle to 2000 RPM. Of course, if any of these temperatures don't work out, and you can just sit there with the engine running to uh, warm the aircraft up. The RPM is now 2000. Now we can move the RPM lever and exercise. We're looking for a 500 RPM drop. So here's one. There we go. Allow the RPM to recover. Two. We did this three times. Cool, the RPM should restore. Alternate air, it's more or less restored there. Alternate air is open, we'll see the RPM drop, close, and the RPM should restore. Ignition, we're then going to check in order. So that is a fairly decent 2000 left. RPM drops, we're looking for a minimum of 50, maximum of 175. Back to both. RPM restores, the right. RPM drops, back to both, RPM increases. Now we can set the power to full. Should really make sure that the uh, brakes are holding. Throttle is full, and now we're setting the placard BPM. So what, what I understand this to mean is we look at our placard, now this, the altitude is about zero. So we should be looking at about 59 on the fuel flow. So I'm going to use my HOTAS uh, mixture to change the mixture so my fuel flow reads 59. Now the uh, iris manual suggests we minus 4 off that, so if that's 59 let's go 55. And the minimum we're looking for is 2550. That doesn't quite work does it? So let's just go back to 59. I'm not entirely sure this checks out, but we're going to go with it anyway. At that point we're going to select idle, select the idle, RPM should be 800 plus minus 50. And again it's just out the bottom end of, uh, of that range. And then we're going to set 1200 RPM. So that is the engine check complete. Anything left to do is talk to air traffic, get a takeoff clearance. Uh, in fact, the pre takeoff checks are probably important, so here we go. Pre takeoff checks, fuel selector is to both, the trim is set for takeoff, the RPM is to high, uh, the mixture is to BPM. We would normally gate this, but I don't think this is modelled. Uh, the flaps are going to set to takeoff, the alternate air is cold, the fuel pump is going to go on, uh, the nav lights are on 
the strobe light can go to white once we've got takeoff clearance, the pitot can go on. What else we've got? Fuel contents, it's 50% is what we're expecting. There's a plethora of other things you check like temperatures, pressures, CO detector, which I don't think is in here, altimeters making sure the QFE is set. Let's do that, shall we? QFE set, zero on the altimeter. Uh, you can set the rest of the avionics up as required. Column three on the control column. Takeoff emergency brief, and then the only other thing is checks during takeoff. And there's a truck on the runway. We'll pretend he's not there either. Okay, we check the engine, temperatures, pressures, and off we go. Now, Iris has done an excellent job of modelling this aircraft and the fact that you have to use your feet, i.e. your rudder pedals, to make it work. Speed's reading, pressure's good, 60 knots. Now, I haven't read the manual on how to fly this, I'm just kind of make it up as I go along. We're airborne, speed to 80 knots, flap is coming up, indicates lots of right rudder, slow speed, full power required to stay straight. As a technique, you can put the top of the spinner on the horizon, and that's a decent climb attitude, so you can see here. It's all about flying visual attitudes. As you accelerate, you need to reduce your right rudder input. As you can see, the ball is now pretty much straight. Lots of trim, and we are airborne. Now, I don't think there's any scenery specifically for RAF butchering. The surrounding area looks awesome. That's pretty shoddy look, not following the runway at all. Okay, 800 feet. I'm going to pretend that we're going to fly a circuit to land here. Now this is the first time I've done it. Uh, whilst trying to keep to a modicum of professionalism and realism. So as far as I can tell, we want to go downwind at, uh, we'll call it 800 feet and 100 knots. We'll slow to 80 knots to configure, and then hold 75 knots on the final turn. Now I've just had a flashback. I seem to think that if you want the correct spacing, you want to put the runway halfway between the wingtip and the filler cap. So that, hopefully, is working out nicely. Speed's a bit fast. I'm wandering about a bit. Well, <laughs> it's difficult for me to speak, it's a bit late. I'm wondering about a little bit because I'm just looking at the FRCs for the pre-landing checks. So don't judge me too harshly on my flying. Uh, so the fuel the fuel pump has been left on from takeoff, so that's fine. I'll keep the 700 feet now. Uh, the canopy is closed locked. The harness is tight. The parking brakes released. And I'll go for flat to take off initially around the final turn. So I'll wait until that gets about 45 degrees behind us. Well, fast. Let's put some flaps down. Bank about 30. Final turn call. We want about 75 knots here. I will do a, another video on this aircraft doing patterns. I'll practice before I do it so uh, it'll be slightly better. The glide path looks good, we're nicely lined up. We're about 75 knots, I'm going to put the flaps to land. There is a land flap and there is also a full flap. Special speed for this is 65 knots. I'll start tricking that power back. That'll do me. Okay, after landing, uh, flaps can all come up. Auxiliary fuel pump can go off. Uh, Peter heat can go off. Looking for a exit to this runway. 
I'll do where do we get to? Flaps. Pump. Well, I'm not sure what sort of exit that is, but we'll go for it anyway. And Pito is off. Strobe lights can come back to red. And I'm just going to park it now just to embarrass myself from. Uh, or stop myself being embarrassed by crashing somewhere. Uh, so strobe lights are red. We can switch any radios off that we don't need. Off. 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 You can go off as well. We'll keep that one for air traffic. GPS can go off. You can go off. All those are off. So shutdown checks. Parking brake is set and applied. Fuel selector, I've just selected that to the left. The throttle should be set to 900 RPM. Uh, the ignition will check in order. Left, both, right, both. Looking no dead cut. Throttle set 1200 RPM. And the cylinder head temperature is stabilised. We'll set 1500 RPM. Correction 1800 RPM. And the head temperature is there. I believe this is just to clean the spark plugs off and make sure the engine's uh, in good order before you shut it down. So we'd wait 15 seconds at 1800 RPM, then select 1200. We'd uncate, ungate the mixture, and then we're ready to shut down. The ignition is off when the prop stops. Now let's open this now. Prop is stopped. The ignition comes off. Radios can go off. Throttle is off. All lights off. One, two. That should have come off anyway. Avionics Master. Oh. Thanks, Microsoft. We seem to have some people. Hello, people. Ooh, that is bizarre. Anyway, ignore them for now. Uh, Chen switch and battery off. I swear I didn't switch them off. Oh well, they're off. Uh, parking brake release because the chocks are in and that is us done so if you're still here thank you for sticking around this was a short uh, this was a very quick look at cold and dark startup taxi takeoff uh, landing and shutdown uh, with minimal accuracy in the flying sense but hopefully the checklist was fairly useful to most but don't forget to chuck in a subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos hit the like button just so other people can uh, be notified of this and until the next time Fly safe and enjoy.